five things you got to do with your puppy as soon as you bring the cutie home. I'm Charles, co-founder of Canine Culture Dog Training here in uh, Dallas, Texas. And number one is you need to limit their access. Biggest mistake everybody makes with their puppy is they put them down on the floor of their house and they say, go have fun. And they are going to go have fun. And they're going to have so much fun, they're going to poop and pee everywhere in the house. They're going to chew on everything because they're bored. And then people are going to get upset with their dog. It's not the puppy's fault. They're immature. They're a baby. And of course, they're going to make some mistakes. So limit their access to making mistakes. And what I mean by that is they don't get free range to the entire house. They earn access to more rooms in the home with their demonstrated good and appropriate behavior in the area of the home that they're in right now. First thing I would do is limit their access to a place, ideally, that does not have carpet in it. So a kitchen with an X pin, an X pin, exercise pin is your friend. That's their chance to not be held all the time and coddled all the time and learn to navigate their portion of the world that they have access to right now and make good decisions. When they are not going potty, not being destructive, now you expand that X pin to let them have maybe access to the entire kitchen. They're doing great. Now you can start using children's gates and give them the kitchen and the living room. Now the hallway. You add room by room by room as they can tolerate the additional access with great success. If they have a step back, you remove that access to that extra room. And the leash is your friend. What I always recommend everyone do is go get an inexpensive six foot leash, grab a pair of scissors and cut the loop off the end. Let your puppy drag the leash throughout the house and the reason you're cutting this off is so it doesn't get stuck underneath the corner of the couch and every piece of furniture. It can more or less slide along with your puppy. The reason this is important is if you're going to let your dog or puppy in this case be in a, a room with you, you still want to be able to communicate and provide feedback and guidance through the leash and a minor correction if they are chewing on something. When I mean minor correction, like that. If they ignore you, you take away the opportunity to ignore and you say their name and give them a little tug until they come towards you. The leash really allows you to reach down, interrupt a bad behavior instead of having to yell at your puppy. Um, a leash provides guidance and communication. Always have a leash on your puppy until your puppy is error free in the room that you're in. If they are still making mistakes, they should be on a leash. As far as what your leash should be attached to, a collar, in this case, it's just a slip lead. It could be a harness. It depends on your dog, your puppy. Um, obviously, if you're unattended, your, your puppy is unattended, don't leave all this on your puppy because it's a choking hazard. Um, this is for when you are with your puppy and you still want to be able to reach down and grab the leash and help guide them back over to you because they were making a minor mistake. Or you are afraid they're going to make a mistake, so you take away the opportunity to make the mistake that they were actually about to make. Routines. Routines are your friend. Routines are your dog's friend. Just like humans have routines, we have uh, habits. Dogs do too. The more habits that you establish quickly as a puppy, the more successful your puppy is going to be in learning how to navigate and live with you in your home. Puppies do not know how to live with us. We have to teach them. So you want to establish routines right away. Obviously, routines are we eat at the same time every day. We go potty right after we eat. We go potty right after we drink. We go to bed about the same time every night. If you're a late night person, that's fine. Your dog will adapt to your routine. But try to establish routines that you can stick with so they're fair because she can count on them occurring like clockwork, especially for potty training. I'm not going to get into potty training a lot in this video. We have a whole separate video on our YouTube channel about how to potty train your puppy or dog. If you're struggling with that, just look that video up and it'll be a great help in helping your puppy uh, with their potty training. A great example of uh, routines is it's, it's important to remember you are not raising a puppy, you're raising a grown dog. So what behavior might look cute right now is not going to be so cute when they're 60, 80, 90, 100 pounds. But even if they're eight pound Bichon, you don't want to have a bizarre behavior of jumping on everybody. So if she jumped on me, I would just go no and push her back down. And we would not let her jump, no. And now she gets pet because she's down. Good girl. Good girl. And then we give her 
plenty of slack in the leash to realize that's her controlling that. You don't want to reward a behavior. No, now you pet. Don't want to reward a behavior that you don't want to see as an adult. That's a routine. She now understands and is learning a routine of how to greet new people with appropriate manners. Same with food. You don't want your dog's nose diving into the food bowl when you lay the food down. You want to teach them wait while I put the food down. There's nothing worse than getting a skull of your dog full grown in your face because they hit you because they're so excited. It hurts. Uh, it happened to me as a child. That's why it's the first thing I teach every one of my puppies. Uh, don't be jumping and being crazy when I put the food bowl down. An important aspect of raising your puppy that you need to get on to right away is socialization and desensitization. This is where a lot of people with their puppy really screw things up. Every time you meet someone, you hand them your puppy, you hand them your puppy, you hand them your puppy. Uh, she starts to doubt that you're going to take care of her and protect her. Uh, you're not helping her by making her meet everybody that let her decide if she wants to meet people. Um, socialization and desensitization is really, you're just getting her used to vacuum cleaners, life noises in your home, life noises outside the home in the front yard, little by little, introducing her to new experiences, new textures, new uh, sounds, new sights. Um, we don't want her freaking out over scary noises, scary objects, scary uh, life, because life is not scary. We want, her, we want her to be neutral. We want your puppy to be neutral. And don't overwhelm them. Introduce, stop. Introduce, stop. And then let her determine the amount of engagement she wants to have with each new experience that you're introducing her to. But don't force her. If she's clearly scared, give her a break. Let her, let her, uh, let her calm down. Desensitization also includes proper grooming and touching your dog. When they go to the vet, they're going to be up close and personal with someone. You want to grab your dog's ear, hold it open, touch it, smell it. The vet's going to smell it, see if there's a yeast infection in there. Um, open their gums, put your fingers in there, grab their toes, touch their toes, touch their nails. Do that with every, just really just get them totally desensitized about being touched anywhere and everywhere. So they're just very comfortable with it. The crate is you and your puppy's friend. Don't look at the crate as a punishment tool or a banishment tool. Look at the crate as your dog's personal space. It's their own den. Uh, don't use it and treat it like punishment. Put their food in, leave the gate open, let them go in and out. That's where they go get their food. That's where they go get their water. But at night, especially the first couple of nights, your puppy should be in a crate. If they're not in a crate, they're going to poo and pee everywhere uh, in whatever room they're in until they start learning how to hold it at night. This crate is actually too big for her body. Your crate should be big enough your puppy can get in, stand up, turn completely around, lay down, have just a little bit of room in front of them and behind them. Um, remember, it's a den. It's not a cave. Uh, wild animals don't look for caves. They look for small dens they can protect and keep warm with their body heat. Um, and if uh, your puppy is whining a lot at night, typically uh, you're gonna have that the first night or two. Um, good girl, good girl. Then put her in a crate, set it next to your bedside, put it up so when you're laying down, her crate is right there. She can smell your breath, feel your presence, and maybe you put a finger over there so she can just kind of like Feel your fingers, touch your fingers, lick on your fingers. Um, it's a great, great way to get your puppy to calm down and not cry all night. Now, the one thing you want to remember is whichever side of the bed you do this with, the bond is going to be a little stronger with this person. So if one of you is the, the dog's owner, um, the, the crate needs to be on that side of the bed because that bond is going to be higher with that person than the other person. This video was helpful and I hope it was. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also follow us and like us on Instagram and Facebook for more useful dog training tips and interesting tidbits on your pup.